Hello and welcome again to another episode of Two Guys Discussing Software. Two, two Irish guys, the most. Every week. <laughs> I know. Every it podcast. Has, it has to be done. So we're here. I'm joined, as you can hear, by his dulcet tones, by my good friend and Director of Business Development and Global Sales, Brendan Walsh. So thank you for joining me again. I think we're doing this together for a number of months now, which we're having fun. Yeah, happy to be here as ever. Yeah. So later on, we're going to be joined by two very intriguing individuals, uh, Sean Sharkey and Ian Blake from Square Dot. We are going to ask them about their creative genius genius around the Don't Be That Guy campaign. I'm sure you've, you've seen the Don't Be That Guy campaign, haven't you? I am hashtagging Don't Be That Guy. Excellent. Who wants to do it. Excellent. Yeah, no, fantastic. So we are here because it's a silly, it's like kind of collection of videos. There's been one or two launched. It's kind of a bit of a comical and metaphorical approach to somebody buying IBM software maintenance, I think, isn't it? It's what we see in the marketplace. And a kind of a, if it ain't broke, why fix it kind of attitude. But I think it ties into the kind of IBM's kind kind of lengthy and costly software support yeah. contracts. And I was definitely getting some reach. I was out in Zurich last week and I was presenting to a Zurich Sam Circle and I presented some case studies, some takeouts on HCL acquisition, the Red Hat acquisition. During the presentation, a guy that I'd never met before says from the audience, don't be that guy. So whatever you've done, it's working. Wow. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. Well, it's great so to it see that. So it means people, it resonates. It translates, yeah. which is great. Yeah. That was, a, that was a Swiss audience, you know, mainly German speakers. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. So it's getting out there. It's getting yeah. out there. Yeah. I wonder what it's doing to IBM's results, though. I'm looking at their results and they have Q1 results came out last week. Three I, in a I row. Know, I know you're going to tell me. Three in a row. <laughs> three in a row. Revenue's down 5%. Their global business numbers, the global service number is flat. Their systems revenue down 11%. But cloud is down 2%. Can you believe that? These guys are cloud company and their revenues are down 2%. I don't know what's going on. It's a bit surprising considering, you know, they've just made a very significant hybrid cloud acquisition. Red Hat. Red Hat, 30 Will they? Will it save them? Well, clearly the market doesn't think so. If, wow. uh, you know, is it a step too far is what people are saying in the market. But if the revenues are down or, and their margins are down, profits are down. And will there be a culture clash? How can two organizations that are quite different work together? That's a big ask. Yeah, very different mindsets. So yeah, I think it could be challenging. They've had challenges like that in the past. Uh, after acquiring Cognos, it was several thousand you know, layoffs. You know, you wonder, are the Red Hat guys thinking the same? Uh, will they change the culture? The customers are thinking the same as well. And what would the impact be to them? as customers how long would it take for the IBM form of licensing and doing business how long would it take for that to impact them yeah uh, so it's not just the employees how will it affect the customers and are they thinking about the customer yeah and have you heard about the latest out from in February in San Francisco Ginny Romady Watson is everywhere apparently mm. Watson is everywhere well we see it a lot of customers, very small amounts that have been shoved in at the bottom of a contract or the bottom of an ESO agreement with their IBM customers. Um, so yeah, it probably is everywhere. I just doubt it's being used very much. Well, they've just sold off some of the Watson yeah. suite, the, the, the commerce and marketing suite. Yeah. Uh, Centrepoint, I can't remember the name of the company now, the, the private equity company that bought the remaining commerce assets were, were packaged under the brand name Watson. So they've been, it's everywhere, but they're actually, it's everywhere, but they're selling it yeah. to, other, to other companies. It's, I wonder, will Watson, though, be a bit like the Oracle Oracle Cloud? You know, you look at Oracle's numbers and their revenue's also down 1% not quite as bad as IBM's 5%. Their cloud is up, is up 1%. I just don't see them. They just they don't seem to be able, these big juggernauts just don't seem to be able to grow. Look at SAP's numbers, revenue down 6.5%. Okay, or up, sorry, they're up 6.5%. So that's modest, I guess. Their cloud, not too bad, actually, 17% growth. But compared to the market, compared to the market, 42% plus growth in the market. You got Microsoft with 48% growth. You've got AWS with 40 41% growth. Google is even bigger than that. But I mean, so you're looking at huge growth in the market, yet these guys are either declining or they're just unable. And this is with the reclassification that goes on. So it's crazy what's going on out there. Yeah. And what I saw on the, actually in the news just this morning, the US defense have a massive $10 billion cloud contract. And guess who's not on the, in the tender? Being booted out early in the process, both IBM and Oracle out of the picture. 
Yeah. Just shows. Just yeah. shows. Well, that's yeah. interesting because, you know, looking at some of the, you know, the recent acquisitions. So, you know, like look at acquisitions and acquisition values. Who are the, who are the guys who are making the most of the, the recent acquisitions? Amazon. Mm. Uh, bought an Israeli, Israeli company, Cloud Endure, for 200 million. Uh, I think it was March, uh, migration, DR, and backup solutions for cloud migration. And Google acquired Aluma, just happens to be another Israeli company, also a cloud migration specialist, particularly for migrating into Google Cloud and their, what they call their Cloud Spanner SQL database. So it's Google doing the acquisitions, it's Amazon, and there is a Microsoft one, I can't remember exactly who they acquired, but the, those three companies are making acquisitions, mm. significant ones. And then there was a really big one. Um, you, you know these companies better than I do. F5, which is a multi-cloud play, acquired uh, Nginx for $650 million. So mm. that's actually bigger than the acquisitions of Google and Amazon. So so they're, they're the trend. You know, it is a big trend. Multi-cloud, hybrid cloud is a big trend. Yeah. But the players who are winning the market are also making the biggest acquisitions. Yeah. So. It doesn't beat the $33 billion, though. Still doesn't beat the thirty-three billion. No, it's it's uh, the thirty-three billion is still number two, I think, of all time in terms of uh, technology acquisitions. Yeah. Uh, Dell buying EMC for sixty-seven billion is yeah. only bigger than it. So yeah. you know. good. Um, I did want to talk a little bit just before we introduce our guests. Do you know, it's a topic we've been talking about a couple of times. This eight billion. You know, the 33 billion, the 8 billion, the 8 billion claim, Oracle are claiming against Google for the use of their kind of Java code and Android. Did you hear the latest? I did. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's fake. I don't believe it. It's, fake uh, it's news. true. No, it's true. Oh, they, it? oh, right. It's true. It's true. They are, the SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States, is has referred it up to Donald Trump administration. So they're going to ask them its views on whether it should hear Google's bid to end Oracle Corp's copyright infringement claim. So that should be interesting. And they've got a few partners in crime, Google have. Microsoft, Mozilla, and the 33 billion guy, Red Hat. They're all in Google's in Google's court in this particular area. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, so it's... it's uh, yeah. see how that pans out. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't know who, 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 who Trump is particularly friends with, either, you know, the Google CEO or... Uh, uh, are the uh, Oracle CEO, but whoever I don't know, do either play golf? You know, Dan and, he's uh, friends with Mara, Mara Largo. I don't know, but he's uh, friends with all the CEOs. I trust say, me. I'd say he'd, he'll <laughs> side with you know with the uh, with Oracle on this one. That's my bet. That he'll go with the the IP, the one who's claiming IP ownership as opposed to fair use. So Google is claiming fair use, and Oracle is saying that it isn't fair use. I'd say he'll go with Oracle if they go with anything. So Larry Ellison, Larry Ellison. You know, I saw Larry Ellison recently on TV. It's an old one. It's just for Christmas. He was on Fox Business and it reminded me he was great in ways, a bit cringy in other ways, of MMA, you know, Conor McGregor, or even like more actually more akin to WWE or WWF, Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant. He was just hilarious. Bombastic. He wanted yeah. to take on SAP and AWS, and he thought he was like everybody's using everybody's using Oracle databases. Oh, well, then Trump is definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Well, speaking of MMA and WWE and the creativity around that, we have two gentlemen here with us who I'd like to introduce from Square Dot. They are the creative geniuses behind the Don't Be That Guy campaign. I'm delighted to have you here. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Um, this is your first time on our show, I believe. It is, yeah, very exciting. Thank you very much, Sean. So so tell me, guys, you know, tell me a little bit about what, you know, the Don't Be That Guy campaign. We love it because we're, we, and we would love it, we're original. <laughs> um, we get some great feedback even from Zurich about the campaign. You know, can you, you know, Sean, you with you on the creative side, tell us a little bit about how you came up with the idea in the first place. I will do, yeah. Um, I, I very quickly tried to summarize how this kind of pieced together. Um, it, I suppose the starting point was the understanding that we wanted to appeal to a, a wider audience because there was a bigger story to tell here. Um, we felt there was a David versus Goliath, you know, a little guy taking on the big corporate. So which is general, broader business appeal. And we wanted to widen the audience from just the software asset manager community. Um, and to do that, we understood that we need to use an analogy to simplify the story, make it into a universal setting where everybody would get it without any hard thinking. You're not that guy, right? But what if the bike was an IBM application and the punctures were software support and the 500 ran into millions? So that was the kind of first piece of the puzzle, if you like. The second piece was um, 
kind of gaining a deeper understanding of our target audience here and, and the uh, our typical soft dress of managers who are very conscientious, diligent, hardworking people who don't want the ship to go down under their watch. And we wanted to tap into that kind of fear of failure, if you like, and um, through highlighting uncomfortable gaps in their due diligence. Get lower cost, better quality, and more responsive IBM software support with Origina. Seriously, don't be that guy. Hence the slightly accusational tagline, don't be that guy. Um, The next piece of the puzzle, if you like, was, and and it kind of defined the tone of this campaign because it's a slightly unusual tone to go for. Um, But it all came really from just the astonishing list of USPs that you guys have as a business, which I I wrote down on a piece of paper. We're talking like 60% average savings. So for large organizations, that runs into millions. The quicker speed of support, um, astonishing kind of speed. And we can cite, for example, the Henderson case study from phone call to fix to get their uh, their warehouse operations back up to optimal levels was literally just 15 minutes. Minutes. Mm. Astonishing speed. Got a quality of support, um, um, you know, for, for any number of reasons. Um, for example, your single point of contact when you have, uh, when anybody rings up, it's the same person they deal with, the subject matter expert. You call IBM and you're likely to get a different person every time, explain the same story over and over again. And um, what will happen when Red Hat? And they call Red Hat in I, the future. I, I, well, that's a very good question. It'll be the same thing. Won't it'll it? probably be the same. Ian, I, I, eventually I, it'll be the same. Yeah, it always, yes. it always is the same thing. You eventually know? they'll wreck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, 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 we're giving you numbers there earlier. We're talking about what's happening in the industry. It's, it's, isn't it mad to think they're in this, they're operating in these industries. They just can't, they can't grow. I mean, what you're, mm. what you're painting the, is probably the, are the reasons they can't grow. You know, um, there seems to be, uh, and, and from an outsider's point of view, it seems to appear that they have a changing focus and they're going all in on the cloud, on big data, and which raises serious questions uh, with regards to their software support. Are they, I, I believe they also sold off uh, division uh, HCL to India, isn't that right? Um, they did, they sold year, a number of their core software assets to India to and, HCL. And, exactly, yeah. and is that to support their acquisition strategy? Um, and as a result, what were the implications for the ongoing legacy software support? Yeah. Um, these are all the kind of USBs that I kind of wrote out on a piece yeah. of paper, on both sides of the piece of paper. I, I, they were so astonishing, so strong. Like you're, you're, what you offer is, is kind of jaw-dropping, really, when you compare the two. And I realized, I, I, as I read them back out to myself, I literally started laughing because the case was so strong. And I understood that the tone of the campaign it would have to be a farce. Mm. It would take a farce simply just to tell the truth. Yeah. And that's how this campaign kind of came together. The last piece of the puzzle was the kind of eureka moment of understanding that, of getting that kind of bolt of lightning. Oh, the bike shop. That's yeah. the universal. That, that's what everybody can get. Yeah. And what if the bike was an IBM application and the puncture is a software support? Brilliant. And that's where it kind of, I grabbed pen, paper, script, Brilliant. and script. And when you had to bring this concept to life then, mm-hmm. Ian, tell us, what, what, how do you go from having that concept to, you just... It's obviously, we're in the, we're in the software industry. This is yeah. what we do. Yeah, 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 we understand yeah. our industry. But mm. for you guys, for us to create something, obviously, it involves coding. Yeah. It involves, yeah. you know, mm. to bring that to life. What, what What's involved? What do you do? Well, first of all, we need, we need to sell it to you guys, I suppose. So the first step is to get your approval that you want us to go ahead and, and, and do that. So... We, there was, a, there was a bit of work in presenting this creative concept to yourself initially. It's a bit like, I suppose, what we had to show was, was the thinking. What campaigns like this look like? What a creative campaign looks like in, in you know, B2B tech world. The insights that Sean has just, you know, insights and USBs that Sean has just explained. The strategy, overall strategy of the campaign, the campaign itself. We, we set about putting, putting the campaign together. And Sean was probably closer to that than I was. It is, yeah. And just bringing, it's really important here that we mention um, the fantastic um, support we got from Gaslight Productions, Mick and Dave and Gaslight. Our expertise finishes up, you know, when we get our plans, you know, our planning, our strategy, our, our concept, our scripts, sell it into you. Yeah. At that point, we need to bring in experts, make this production look as good as it did. It reminds me of sort of like Mad, I used to watch Mad Men, you know, yeah. the series mm-hmm. with Joan Howe. 
and you know they'd have the creative team yes you know coming up with the ideas yes thinking lying on their couches drinking whiskey i wish it was like that sure. old fashioned <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah and then yeah giving it to john character yes john and then he'd present it to the buyer you yes know? And, and from what you've described i'm thinking you know mad men it's you know madison avenue is, is it is that a very old world view of how this stuff comes together or is it, or is it just a modern day the, the, the principle know? is the exact same yeah. you know um, but yeah probably less smoking and less uh, whiskey um, <laughs> well or not, not over, over in my case maybe more or I don't less, know or less nights out <laughs> <laughs> to sell the pitch but um, it, it, what we really should mention though also the director um, Sean Clancy was fantastic yeah. um, uh, as soon as he did his treatment and brought the storyboard together. I knew we had the right crew involved. Yeah. And it was through Sean who also got, uh, did the casting for the session and, and the wonderful cast we had with Brian Quinn and Seamus O'Rourke who brought the script to life. And we could see on the day, this is working. These guys are just they're playing off each other. It's, it's, it's fantastic. So that's... that's what, kind of and what was your favourite part, Ian, of the whole thing? Your, your reaction to it really... That was, oh. Yeah, that was uh, when when we got the feed. You know, it all came together and sent it to you, and then the feed, the feedback and the launch night was was really that. You know, to see the excitement amongst the original employees, that's where it really kind of um, makes it worth getting. You know, worth running a business like this, even without the whiskey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you were happy with the overall outcome of what we I- produced. I was very, very happy. I was delighted. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it wasn't really uh, far from my own imagination when, when I first wrote down the scripts and, and you know, reading through it. I actually pictured it. E- even like Seamus and Brian, the characters, for some yeah. bizarre reason, were, were, were very tight on, on yeah. what I was kind of picturing. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, no, we're, we're really delighted. I know you've just, uh, currently you've just, I think, launched the main video. We have a series of five shorts coming up. And to be honest, which I think my, my favorite parts are, are the shorts that are still to go. Yeah. Um, which each highlights a different USB and in a very short, succinct and kind of witty way, yeah. they play on all of these USBs. And, and, and so my, my favorite part is still to go. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. And finally, just what your view on, you know, as outsiders of the industry, You've mm. started working with us for a number of years. Mm. You're now in the industry, I guess you could say. Mm. Do you have a view, different view today than you had when you first started working with us? I personally do. I, um, it's been an eye opener. And it's like I, I, I get back, I keep going back to the USBs because, you know, I, I in, in all my years in advertising and marketing, I've never come across, I've never had a client that had such a strong set of USBs that would make you truly unique in the market as a, as a, creative in in advertising um you can't you couldn't wish for better tools to work with than having a client that is so seriously going places so unique it's i'm not saying it makes the job easy but it makes it easier and it's a joy to work for you Brilliant. it's also I a just, successful campaign I mean, how, how many views have we had so i mean we're, we're coming up to 200 000 views yeah full length fantastic. views yeah. wow yeah. yeah but just to back up what sean was there saying and i just i said it in an email like i suppose We've been working with you for three or four years now at this stage, and we always knew you were ambitious, but this was further proof of how, how big your thinking is, is, is great for your business, but it's also great to be your agency because, you, you know, we know you want to do big things and make a big splash. and. That's just, it's a great palette to work with, you know. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, we're looking forward to seeing uh, the next part. Sh- Shark Proof, I believe, is coming out next. Excellent. <laughs> On yeah. the 8th of May. So we look forward to seeing that. Very good. Um, uh, hopefully our listeners will enjoy it too. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Ian, for Thank joining you. me. Pleasure. And myself and Brendan. I think um, we, we need to wrap this up, Brendan. Uh, Probably do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what time of day is in New York or San Francisco or even here in Dublin, but yeah, I've got to get the day's work done. We got to do a day's work. Thank you, gentlemen. We really enjoyed it, and uh, we'll have another episode of two Irish guys discussing software. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Nice.